some of the, the greatest influences, right, can be the simplest things. And so we're supporting all sorts of causes around our own hometown, locally and globally, for helping to get more people on bikes more often. It sounds logical, but, but again, you know, as I think bike companies have been left a little bit off the hook on these things before, they just were like, oh, they just make bikes and that's enough, but it's really not enough. Hello, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. On the show, I interview peak performing innovators in the creative, social impact, and earth conservation spaces who are working to change the world. This episode is brought to you by Brain FM, which combines the best of music and neuroscience to help you relax, focus, meditate, and even sleep. And if you're liking the show, I would love it if you'd buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Isolde T. See the show notes for details. And now, let's get on with the show. Hey there, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Thank you so much for being here. I'm super thrilled that you're here. I'm also super thrilled and honored to have this week's guest. Check this out. Kevin Cox was appointed president of Electra Bicycle Company in January of 2014. Under his guidance, Electra has celebrated lots of victories. This includes having the number one selling bicycle and number one selling e-bike in the United States of America for multiple years, earning a coveted spot on Oprah's favorite things list. Awesome. And winning the REI Vendor Partner of the Year Award. Also awesome. Additionally, Kevin was instrumental in moving the company back to its hometown of Encinitas, California, where the global headquarters is found today, and they're doing incredible work. Kevin, thank you so much for being here. Welcome. This is all the super excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, this is so great. I, as, as I was mentioning to you before we started recording this session, during the pandemic, my husband and I got into riding very seriously. It, 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 for me, it's really only around New York City. He has gone on these 500 mile, thousand mile riding journeys where he's traveled all over the place on his bike. And I, I'm just wondering if we can just jump in. What do you think accounts for this huge boom in, in bicycling over the last couple of years? Isn't that crazy, right? And, and it's something that, I mean, of course, no one could predict it. But, you know, if you can, and everyone can. So when I say, if you can, of course you can. Take yourself back to, you know, March of 2020, when literally the global wheels came off, you know, of, of the world as we know it. Mm. Um, and it was, a cr of course, a crazy time. So what we saw at uh, Electra was, of course, our entire global sales channel, you know, in a day just shut down. Mm. And we looked around and said, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? I mean, we are in a serious uh, state of, of alert here. And um, so the first thing we did, of course, is get on the phone with all of our factories around the world and say, absolutely hit the brakes. Just stop, mm. stop, stop. We have no place we're going to be able to put these bikes and parts and accessories and helmets and everything else we make. Um, so just, just hold. So we pump the brakes on that, um, but only for a couple weeks. Hmm. And then we started looking around and saying, listen, there's one of two things that are going to happen. This is either going to be the crushing blow after nearly 30 years to the electro bicycle co company, or we're going to make this our finest hour. Mm. And uh, we looked around and said, this, this could be an opportunity. So within a very short period of time, uh, we pushed all in. We pushed our chips across the table and got back to our factory and said, just kidding. Uh, keep those orders going. As a matter of fact, just make more. And so wow. we started placing orders and orders and orders on our factories. Because, you know, you, like a lot of people, um, myself, my family included, you know, all of a sudden you're quarantined at home and you don't know what you're going to do. And, you know, as things started to pro progress, you know, we found out, you know, what were those activities we could be doing that would keep us distance, that would get us some outdoors, that would, you know, bring some sort of normalcy back to our lives. And it turns out bike riding was one of those things. It was just, just luck. 
Incredible. And I remember going out and everybody was masked up and people who were walking were more masked up than people who were riding in, in part because you move faster. You yeah. and, and also here in New York City, you had the streets to yourself. I felt very safe riding around, which I think is incredible. And lots of things changed as part of of this increased bike riding, decreased cars on the road. And I'm a huge proponent of, of, of really being sustainable and, and looking at the environment and, and how we can minimize our impact on it. I imagine all of that biking sort of human powered uh, motion was probably ha probably had a benefit to the environment. Can you talk a little bit about about what happened there? Did you notice? Did you do any research on that? How did how did the environment get impacted by the fact that so many more people were biking and so many fewer people were driving or taking buses? Yeah, you know, and there's been some crazy pictures that you can find on, you know, the internet of cities pre-pandemic and then a year or so post-pandemic of just, you know, uh you know, cleaner environments, less smog, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And it's been absolutely mind blowing um, um, that, that it really in a short period of time has really corrected, you know, some of these things, you know, they do say, and there's a bunch of statistics around this, but, you know, if you can replace, um, you know, your car with a bike, just 6% of the time. And when they look at global numbers, they say, you know, it's, it's something to the effect of like 20,000 fewer deaths due to chronic disease. It's like $800 million saved in healthcare costs just due to improved air quality, right? Mm. They say seven to 10,000 days of work lost to illnesses averted because people are living healthier lifestyles, you know, less cardiovascular disease, fewer cases of diabetes, you know, the list goes on and on and on. And, and I think that's a, that's a, an awesome thing you know we we often say you know the bike is a very simple solution to some of today's really challenging problems and you know like traffic congestion like uh, obesity like you know environmental pollution uh, et cetera et cetera so it's a it's it's interesting to think that it took something like this to really kind of open so many people's eyes around the globe uh, you know about the value of, of, of the bike. And you know the other interesting thing is that, um, and and one of the reasons it was such a huge boom for Electra is, you know, we always say that, you know, we make bikes for the rest of us, right? So <laughs> we don't make, you know, we, we don't make road bikes, we don't make bike, you know, triathlon bikes, we don't make mountain bikes. You know, there's other great companies doing stuff there, um, and oftentimes I'll find myself out and about and you know, uh, mingling and mixing with people or giving presentations somewhere. And um, I'll meet someone and they'll say, hey, you know, Casey, what are you doing these days? Um, and I'm saying, oh my gosh, you know, I have the best job in the world. You know, I'm working for this great lifestyle bike brand called Electra Bikes. And they'll be like, hmm, Electra Bikes. I don't know if I've heard of Electra Bikes, but you know what, my wife and I, we just bought townies. I'm like, oh, well, that's our bike, right? That's the best selling bike in, uh, uh, America, a bit of a, a sub brand, all of its own. But you know, the 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 point there is is that is that all these people started to to get out and just ride bikes for fun again. Things that they hadn't done since they were you know maybe in 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 grade school. And mm -hmm. if you do the studies, what you find out is is you know that ten percent or so of the people you know ride their bikes for sport and racing and you know high fitness and the other 90 percent just ride for leisure and lifestyle so sometimes people say oh yeah electra i've heard of that that's you're that niche you know uh, cruiser bike co company that's where we started 1993 making cruiser bikes you know reinventing the cruiser bike um and i say yeah that's us we're the little niche brand serving 90 percent of the consumers out there that just want to get out and have a good time and feel the wind blow in the air and enjoy riding a bike again so uh, yeah, we have a big, big uh, dem demographic. And when those people get together and all start riding bikes again, you know, you see these great things happen across the world, like, you know, roads opening up fewer cars out there. And, you, you know, again, it gives us the opportunity to lean into more things like, uh, 
like Ciclavia events, you know, where they close down city streets and just open it to peds and bike riders gives us the opportunity to work with, you know, local and state government on pushing forward with more bike lanes and share our lanes, um, you know, all sorts of things, as well as, you know, ride share and, uh, and those uh, partnerships that we have, have, have as well. So yeah, it's a super exciting time for, for bike riding. And I have to be honest, you know, we're taking a hard look at what's going on in the world right now. And it's very hard to see, uh, you know, an end to it. You know, I think the genie is out of the bottle a bit and people are really enjoying this new, in often cases, new found and in other times, you know, renewed love for, for just riding a simple bike, you know? You know, we always say bike riding doesn't have to be difficult and technical. It can just be simple and easy. As much as possible. <laughs> As much as possible. Yeah, I, right? you know, it, to me, you know, I'm listening to you, and I have so many questions. Uh, some, of, a lot of what you said really resonated with me because I love that. Again, New York City, where I live, they have designated bike lanes just about everywhere in in the entire city. You can find bike lanes, which I feel very. Uh, I feel really, again, safe. I feel good about about putting on my helmet and getting out there and riding because most streets are going to have some form of of a bike lane. And and yet you mentioned something and I want to I'm going to sort of piecemeal all of the different things you just said. Yeah, you sorry. mentioned no, 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 please. I, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm furiously writing things down so I can make sure we talk about it all. You said cruiser bike is where Electra started. Can you pretend I'm a novice, which I pretty much am? Sure. Uh, what is a cruiser bike as opposed to some of the other bikes that you might you might that you might have right. or somebody else might have? I, I I imagine cruiser bike sounds like it's something that you go kind of like gentle ride through a space like a city street or whatever. But I don't actually know what the nomenclature is. Right. Really good question. Right. And, you know, sometimes when you're you're in a business, right, you take so many things for for granted. And, and, and again, at Electra, we try to dumb things down just because you know, in, in, in a way that it just makes sense to to, you know, your your everyday consumer. You know, I always say, hey, if I wouldn't put my mom on it, then we shouldn't be making it right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, so, you know, for us in in 1993, you know, we. We, it's kind of the genesis of Electra really wasn't the bike. Um, the company was founded by, by two Germans and that had literally funded a trip to the US by selling pieces of the Berlin Wall when it came down. And when they got here and got together, you know, they thought it'd be fun to, you know, they would love this kind of Encinitas, you know, North San Diego County each vibe sort of thing. So they actually started making uh, t-shirts and they had some cool ideas for some t-shirts and they thought selling them in, uh, you know, these little boutique stores would be super fun. They sold some into, you know, local shops around where we were and found out that really that business wasn't going quite as well as they thought it could go. So they actually made a, like a beach cruiser bike, like what you would think like the old Schwinn's would be single speed. And they made one of those as like a piece of POP to kind of help generate some more sales. And uh, people kind of glommed onto the bike and thought, hey, that's kind of a cool, you know, retro looking bike. And thus was really the incarnation of the electro bicycle company in 1993. So literally for 10 years, the company just made beach cruisers, you know, that's got a, you know, a smaller wheel than a road bike has. It's a very relaxed riding position. In most cases, there's just one speed. Sometimes they have a derailleur. So it gives you the opportunity to have a few more gears, but very, very simple, big wide handlebars. You can carry your surfboard on it and just kind of put around on, on, on flat roads. And then it wasn't until 2003, uh, that we started to see what was happening in the bike world. And it turns out that there was this, there was a lot more people riding bikes, like starting to commute or ride around towns or trying to do some shopping or this and that and the other. And it turned out most of them were riding like a, like a mountain bike that they'd kind of, you know, set up somehow to be a little more utilitarian. And we looked at that and said, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I bet we could do something better than that. And in 2003, that's where we uh, launched our bike called the Townie. 
that we still make today. NetBike has a, we say kind of tongue in cheek, uh, we say flat foot technology. It's a double patented uh, design process that we use on, on that bike that just puts the rider in a more comfortable riding position, moves the pedals a little bit forward and it relaxes the angle of where the saddle is on the seat tube. Um, it gives you a really upright riding position. And the one thing that it does do is it allows you to be sitting in the seat. And when you come to a stop, you can put your feet flat on the ground. That's the name flat foot technology. Mm. And that really created this entire new market of bikes called comfort bikes. Mm -hmm. There wasn't really a comfort bike before. It was some, like I said, it was some retrofit road bike or retrofit mountain bike that people had kind of tried to make more comfortable so they could get around town. And then we created this bike called the Townie and um, it really changed the company, of course, and really changed the face of how people thought about um, bicycles in general. Um, so it was a real jumping off point for us. Like I said, it's a bike we still make today. Uh, of course, it's modernized a bit, uh, but it still uses the same flat foot technology. And I think that's the thing that, um, you know, allows a rider to be in this really comfortable position without putting any stress on your back because you're sitting more upright or doesn't have you leaning forward. So you're putting stress on your wrists or your arms. Um, and it still keeps you in a very comfortable riding position. Um, and, and, and so I always say, you know, that's just, that just has allowed so many more people to get back to riding bikes because it's, it's not intimidating, you know, it doesn't, you know, it's all inclusive for, for Electra. And, you know, we, you know, we make bikes that kind of fit your lifestyle, not the other way around. It's not you trying to fit into the style of, 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 you know, a road bike or a mountain bike, you know, we're just making a bike that you can take out and do the things that you like to do um, and feel very comfortable in doing it and feel very confident. And at the same time, you know, having fun and, 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 and feeling a bit stylish because you know, we do pride ourselves on making very, very fun and stylish bikes. I was looking and I love, I love the, 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 you use the color schemes and things like that. I think it's great. I, it's interesting that you were talking about like, oh, back issues and, and keeping yourself upright. I have an upright bike, uh, not a townie because mm. I didn't know about them when I was bike right. shopping a couple of years we're ago. We're going to change but, that. That's right. Obviously <laughs> I'm going to have to start saving my pennies, but, uh, but, but, but there is something really lovely about the notion of taking the time to think through whether or not the person is going to have wrist issues or back problems. You know, biking to me seems to be like it's something that you can do well into your 50s, 60s, 70s, and even beyond if if you're doing it, right? But but some of those things, the wear and tear on your body, become problems if you're not addressing them. So I'm 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 grateful to you that you're doing that because because I do have back issues and wrist issues and whatever. But there's a there's a state of mind, there's a mindset I think that that you have to have as the as the the guiding force behind this company that takes all that into account. And and as this is the Innovative Mindset podcast, I kind of have to ask that. What is your mindset as you guide the company, as you're looking for inspiration to in your design process and in serving your customers? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, I think, you know, for us, you know, at, a, at, the, at the most, I guess, simplistic level, right, is that, you know, we have this, you know, we always say that, you, you know, what, what we're all about is just getting more people on bikes more often. And so everything we do has to pass through that, that filter, you know, of being able to do that, right? I mean, we, we exist to get more people out, out riding. And listen, if they're riding a Trek bike or some other brand, that's okay. I'd love to see them all riding Electras. But just the sheer fact of knowing that that the goodness and the, the, the gigantic global challenges that riding bikes help solve, that's the basis for, for everything we do getting more people out there more often. So when we look and we say, well, you know, what's the, you, you know, if we had to have a, have a, a vision for our future, right? At Electra, we would just say that, that, you know, it's our belief that 
happier, healthier people, you know, lead to a happier, healthier planet, all right? So for us, we just want to, you know, connect people to our planet one bike ride at a time. And again, it's, 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 it's simplistic, but you still have to pass things through, through a filter, especially when you're designing products, right? So we look at everything and say, and say, you know, is it going to make someone's life more enjoyable, right? Is it going to be fun? You know, is it, is it stylish? We have a, 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 you know, a brand pillar around creativity and doing things that are fun and stylish and colorful. So that's uh, always a mantra for, for, for us. And so, um, you know, can it pass through that, that fil filter, um, you know, and, um, you know, in, in, in a lot of cases, you know, affordability is, is, is um, kind of a, it's a moving target, but of, of course, in order to get more people out riding, you know, you have to keep that at the forefront too. Um, so all of our products have to be accessible to, to people, no matter what their, you know, their education or their job is, or, or, you know, what their social status is or, or what have you. So I think that's, you know, that's where I, I sit. So we oftentimes, well, not often, always, uh, we have <laughs> a, uh, we have a process that we call win the room. Um, so while we may ha might have our creative team off, you know, putting together, you know, um, some new graphics on a bike or a style, or we might have our marketing team coming up with a new uh, product campaign or a product team, of course, coming up with ideas, you know, for how to make a better basket, of course, or how to make the next best bike, you know, all of those things, once they get to a certain point, we bring all the stakeholders in, into a room and we have, you know, our options and we have what we consider the current best in class out there as an option. And, you know, we have a brutal, brutally honest conversation around, you know, is this the best? Does our product win the room? You know, if you look at it for all the aspects of what it takes to be a, a great electro product, you know, are we a five out of five in all of those? And if we aren't, we go back and fix it. Um, and I think we just keep pushing ourselves, right? We set a very high standard for, for what we will allow to reach the market. Um, and I think because of that, you know, we have a team that's just absolutely 100% committed to doing awesome work. So when you have that, you know, it makes, it makes, of course, my job, you know, super simple, I think, you know, uh, and, and of course, very, very fun. I will say that, you know, um, um, oftentimes, you know, I catch my, myself, you know, just really in, in the business, right? And just like, you know, the hustle and bustle of the business in general, everything that's going on in, in, in the world today. And, you know, I just get lost a little bit in just the, the, the day to day. But then something comes up and literally this happened to me this morning. I got an email from uh, one of our, uh, our folks down in uh, New Zealand. And um, they sent this great photo of uh, an athlete winning the pursuit. That's an event that's done on the velodrome, you know, a big banked, you know, racing track indoors usually. Um, and it was at the Commonwealth Games in 1990. And um, the guy who sent it, um, his dad uh, coached this athlete back in the Commonwealth Games. Uh, and he went on to win four gold medals. And you think, well, how does this, you know, come back to us today? Well, it turns out that that athlete's dad still uh, remains a friend uh, with, with the coach, and he re recently turned to 80. And for the last so umpteen years, he just hasn't really been able to get out and push the pedals on a bike. It's just been out of his range. So we took him to... Uh, he took him one of our new Townie Go um, pedal assist e-bikes and he just absolutely flipped. 
And now he's at 80 years old, back out riding his bike and just loving life. And, you know, it's these little stories that somehow, you know, reconnect you with the fact that, yeah, it's just a bike, but sometimes it's more than a bike, right? Sometimes it's really changing someone's life in a, a super positive way. One bike, one person, you know, one great story at, at a time. And it's not in often that I get letters like this from, you know, consumers that say, you know, I, I, you know, my doctor told me I, I can't ride a bike anymore because I have, you know, lower back issues, or I just had a back surgery, but then I found your townie with a flat foot technology and it's so comfortable. And now I'm back riding a bike again, or, you know, it's, it's, it's all these things. I hadn't ridden a bike for so many years, but now my kids, you know, are all out riding bikes and I want to be able to ride to the lake with them. And I found, you know, one of your bikes, a cruiser, a townie or a loft or whatever it was. And it was just so stylish and it just made me feel so confident in riding because of the positioning that now I'm back out, you know, riding again. And I hadn't done it for you know 30 years. So it's these sort of small things I, I, I think is over that just that, you know, that just push me forward every day with a smile on my face and think about, you know, how fortunate I am to be working for such a great uh, company as uh, Electra and all that we've done. You know, it's funny, you're saying it's these small things and I'm going, they're not small, they're huge. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's amazing to me how I, for uh, for a healthy part of the last decade, I had to walk with a cane due to some injuries. And one of the things that I did to help myself was was walk and as and when I was able to ride a bike very gently. And and still, I'm not where I'd like to be. But one of the things that uh, that I found during the pandemic, especially, is is this is that it gave me a sense of independence right that i could go where i wanted to go even if it took me longer than my husband who's an amazing rider but it, it felt very good to know that if i wanted to get there that i could under my own power but having said that to go a little bit you know sort of even further an e-bike something like that that is what you called pedal assist where it's not doing it all for you it's not a motorcycle but it helps you when you need it I think is great. And it provides, again, that level of independence those, to someone like me who might not have the strength to get up up the Brooklyn Bridge when I'm trying to cross it, right? So right. Can, can you talk a little bit about that? What what do you think is, is the mindset of the people who ride your bikes? Instead of just your mindset, which I appreciate you talking about, but, but the people who want to be out there, what do you think their mindset either is or needs to be in order to actually put feet on the pedals and start moving. Right, right. You know, the e-bike's a funny thing, right? I mean, because, well, it's funny for us, especially with a with a brand name called Electra Bikes. So my whole life, of course, you know, everyone is always saying like, oh, you, wait, um, electric bikes? No, no, Electra Bikes. Wait, but you make electric bikes? No, we don't make electric bikes, you know? So this has been going on for years and years and years. And now, Finally, I'm proud to be able to say electric bikes, electric bikes, no, electra bikes. Well, you do you make electric bikes? Of course we do. Yeah. I mean, with a name like that, why wouldn't we, right? <laughs> um, so it's come, it's come uh, full circle. So the e-bike is a is a is an amazing tool, I think, today. Um, I, I often say that, you know, riding a cruiser bike or a townie is absolutely awesome, you know, until the road tips uphill and they mm. go, huh. This, this isn't quite as fun as I remember, right? Because, you know, listen, our, our bikes aren't, aren't, I mean, of course they're sporty and stylish, but, you know, they're not like a road bike or a mountain bike that are made, you know, have a geometry that are, that are, that are you know, purpose built to be able to climb hills and go fast, right? Ours are purpose built to be fun, stylish, comfortable, and to turn heads and make you feel great about, you know, riding. Um, so, so it's 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 just a little bit of a of a different mindset, mm -hmm. and you know the whole 
e-bike thing, it's been going on in Europe for, for years and years. And, you know, I joke sometimes about what, what I call the Holland curve, because, you know, if you've been to Holland, uh, specifically mm. in Amsterdam, you know, they have, you know, four-story parking structures that are just for bicycles. Um, and, you know, they've been selling um, pedal assist and e-bikes there for years and years and years. Um, and they're maybe 10 years ahead, ahead of us in that, in that whole, whole um, life cycle. Um, but here in, in, in the States, you know, we're just at the, uh, just reaching the sharp end of the hockey stick there. We're just starting to turn it on. You know, you go back for Electra five or so years ago, it was maybe two, three, 4% of our bikes were, you know, e-bikes. Uh, you know, we finished up 2021 and li literally, you know, half of the bikes that we sell now globally are our pedal assist e-bikes. And I think consumers look at those in, in a lot of different ways. So again, if you back up as old a few years, what people would say is e-bikes, right? That's cheating, right? That, that's cheating. That's not riding a bike. You know, you have to push the pedals or you have to do this or whatever. And I would always say, well, you know, for, for us, everything we've made to date has been, well, rightfully what you said, a pedal assist bike, which means it only gives you an assist when you're turning the pedals. There's no button to, you know, to give you a throttle uh, to just go without pedaling. Um, and I think that's opened up a whole new set of consumers um, that would like to ride a bike or would have in, in, in the past but a few things kept them from doing that. So, you know, we like to make sure that when, you know, someone's getting ready to leave their house in the morning to go to work or to go out to run their daily errands or whatever they're gonna do, that they reach for the bike lock keys instead of the car keys. And some of the ways that you can do that, of course, are just removing barriers, right? So I'm going to work, but I don't wanna show up sweaty. Okay, well, an e-bike can help with that because, you know, you don't really have to work as hard if you don't want to. Um, well, I want to go out and, you know, get groceries or whatever, but, you know, then I got this big hill I got to come up when I come home and it's too hard with everything else. Huh, an e-bike solves that problem, you know, completely. So, you know, the other thing is, well, I would like to go out and ride for 20 miles, but I think I can really only make it maybe five or six miles. Huh, an e-bike solves that problem. And so you can cover more ground and see more things and go more places. They did a bunch of studies on that and they actually found out that people that were riding e-bikes as opposed to, we, we, we like to call them, you know, electric and acoustic now so <laughs> kind of in the guitar world. So, I love it. So, so people that were riding e-bikes versus acoustic bikes were actually, you know, riding, you know, um, three times more often and three times farther, longer than, than, than they were on their um, acoustic bikes. So we're actually getting more you know, um, outdoor time, more, um, you know, they're burning more calories. Um, you, you know, I, it, for, for us, it's just, it's all goodness. So I think the mindset of that consumer falls into a bunch of different buckets. Um, um, those being, you know, a couple of the big ones. And then the other one for, for us is, it's just absolutely, I mean, unequivocally, just super fun. I mean, you just, can't get on in a, an electric e-bike and start riding around and not be smiling. You know, we have modes of support, right? So you can you can have it turned off and ride it, or you can ride it in like a an eco or a tour or a sport or a turbo mode. And it, it just means how much more assist the uh, the motor is giving you while you're riding. And 99. Point six, five, three percent of the time when someone comes back from their first test ride, it's in turbo mode because it's just so fun to zip along and, <laughs> and to go, go, go. So, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, if you can do that in a super fun, stylish way, um, I, I, I think people are really, well, I know for a fact that people are really uh, jumping into this uh, part of cycling with both feet for sure. And 
Absolutely true. I, I mean, I ride motorcycles and that feeling of going fast is amazing for sure. But if you're not going to go through all the process of, of getting your motorcycle riding license, this this seems like another really great way to be out there with, like you said, the wind in your hair, which I think is, you know, to me, that's one of the I love going fast for sure. And sometimes my my legs can't pump that hard. On the other hand, something you said that really strikes me is you said, you know, when, when you're going out and you're doing your shopping and you've got you've got bags or whatever and you put them in your basket and then the bike is heavier and then it need, you need a little more help getting getting back home or something like that with your with your grocery shopping. And I love my bike basket because I remove it and I take it in and it, it's a little shopping basket. I bring it back, I hook it back up and and I and I love that it's it's a very convenient it's a very convenient thing to have on my bike. And I know you've just come out with a basket at Electra. And I'd love if, if you could talk about, first of all, I love the name, Plasket. I think it's great. But I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what the innovation is in the Plasket and what made you decide to innovate in this way. Yeah, great. Yeah, I mean, um, and listen, having a basket on, on, on your bike is is awesome. So is ha ha having a bell and so is everything else. We always uh, say that, um, you know, um, personalizing your bike is, is you know, one of the most fun things that you, you can do. So not only is buying a new Electra super fun, but finding that awesome bell and, the you know, the new basket or plasket to put on it or, you know, customizing the grips or saddle or custom fenders or whatever can really make make your bike super fun so we are all about the personalization process mm. at at electra for sure so we sell uh we sell a lot of baskets a lot um and we make baskets that are you know affixed to bikes we make baskets that are metal that are aluminum that are stainless steel that are wicker um we worked with some um artists in um, uh, Mozambique uh, and work with them specifically on some natural baskets that they made here. It was a, a great story because one, uh, we got to support this village in Mozambique, which is not really unlike our own beach community of in Encinitas as well, but they were all handcrafted baskets there. Um, so it's a real give back for us. Um, and and you know, so we're always looking at at, of course, ways to win the win the room. Um, and you know, recently, I think that well, I'm going to back up for one second and give a little bit of a overarching here. I would say, in general, that it makes sense, right, for a bike company to care about the environment. I mean, it just makes sense. Right? I mean, we're making a product that is. That is, you know, pretty environmentally sound. Um, Yay. And we've already talked about how those products can help solve these super complex problems, traffic congestion, whole public health, climate change, all these things are going on. But I would also say that the bike industry in general has been kind of given an environmental pass hmm. just based on the fact that, that, hey, we're making a product that, that helps with these things. But that doesn't give us the right to, to just keep creating products that still leave behind some sort of footprint. And I think there's always opportunities to turn over rocks and find places where we can lessen our, our impact. And one of the ways we recently did this was in the basket uh, uh, arena. There are a bunch of these plastic baskets that beach baskets that people put their beach towels in or their yoga mats or whatever and they haul them down to the beach and whatever and you can find these things everywhere but they're just made out of plastic which isn't a good thing to be making things out of these days if you can help it right um so we looked at that product and said hey listen we know people like to ride bikes to the beach. We know people like to ride bikes to go to yoga, to the grocery store, to all these places. Again, right? We make bikes for the rest of us, people that the 90%, right? That just want to get out and ride a bike and go do their normal, you know, things in, in life. And so we looked at that and said, you know, we could do a better job 
Um, and because we're a bike company, it's really incumbent upon us to be leaders in these areas. And when we have the opportunity to make a difference, we should try to make a difference. So we set out with this um, idea of really making a, you know, a fully, you know, recycled material product um, that we call the Plasket. Uh, so it's a bike basket. Um, that's made out of, you know, uh, recycled ocean plastic and ocean bound plastic. Um, it, um, it has our Huggy Globe, I, I, I call it the, 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 the Huggy Globe logo on it. So, so you know it's a, a super sustainable uh, product. And even after it's made, it's still recyclable itself again. Um, and, you know, we made a bracket for it that just snaps onto your handlebars or it can snap onto your bike rack. Um, and the basket just slides on and off of, of, of that. So you can have it on your bike and easily slide it right off and carry it with you wherever you may go. And, um, and it was, um, it, it seems so simple, right? Is all you got to do is make a mold and, you know, and inject in this, you know, this, recycled ocean plastic and off you go. But um, it's a it's a super challenging process. I mean, it's challenging from uh, finding the the proper vendors that can really, you know, help you s source true product that is um, that that is certified uh, recycled ocean plastic and ocean bound plastic. Um, and, you know, it takes a, a group of certified smart people to really find these materials and find uh, someone who knows how to work with them and manufacture them in the right way. Again, you think all plastic is plastic, but it's not. And they all have different flexes and durometers and thing, things like that. So to really make a quality product um, took us a long time. I mean, I think we started the plastic, the Plaskit R&D project in... Oh my gosh. And we started thinking about it all the way back in like 2017, I think, to be honest. Um, and we knew there was a better way to do it. And it took a while to find some things and to organize everything that it could do. And then to figure out a smart way and a simple way to get it on and off your bike was challenging. Um, and then to make prototypes of it. And then again, like I mentioned before, find the mic right manufacturing partner. We knew we wanted to make this product in, in the United States. And we found a local partner right in Long Beach, California, which is just, you know, an uh, uh, hour and a half or so uh, north of us. Um, and, you know, we finally got around to uh, getting it across the finish line uh, uh, just last year. So it was a, a long and painstaking process but it kept winning the room every time we put it up against um, its worthy rivals. And um, now I think we're super proud to uh, have this in the lineup for, for uh, Electra uh, products. And of course, for our consumers that are, you know, that are savvy and, and, and really appreciate, you know, what it takes to, you know, create, create products, uh, like like the plastic, you know. I think they've they've. I, my marketing team has told me a, a bunch of times that you know. I think it's like seventy five percent or something of millennials. You know, will spend more on products, right? If they know it's you know sustainable or comes from a sustainable brand, right? Um, um, and so you think, well, we should just do this with everything, but um, it's super super challenging. Uh, to do. And sometimes I think you do it because um, it's fun and challenging mm. for sure. Sometimes you do things because, oh, you think it'll be a profitable venture and other times you do it because it's the right thing to do. Um, and I think the Plaskit started out as being, hey, you know, we're going to sell a bunch of these things and it's going to be, you know, an awesome addition to our product line. And I think by the time we got down to the end of it, you know, we were saying, this is the right thing to do. Um, and um, it's, you know, keeping material out of our ocean. Um, the brand was started at, at the beach. We live at the beach. I'm in the ocean almost every day. 
Um, and, you know, to know that we're pulling, you know, tons and tons and tons of plastic out of the ocean to make a product that people love and use. Well, it's a, it's a feel good for us. And it gets back to, uh, you know, getting the 80 year old riding an e-bike, you know, sometimes you just get caught up in the business of business and you don't stop long enough to take, take a breath and say, Hey, you know, this is a good thing. It's, it's, it's doing right by, by our planet and like I said before, happier, healthier people, right, lead to a happier, healthier planet. So anything we, we can do to, to get that to happen uh, is, is good. Again, you're singing my song. I love it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, I, I will say, you know, I will say on, on top of that, some of our, you know, um, some of our goals over the next few years, you know, really include, you know, um, you know, removing plastic uh, waste from, you know, all all things, you know, Electra. So we have a, you know, a plastic free packaging, you know, initiative that we hope to accomplish by 2024. Um, and it's it's sometimes these small things, you know, that you look at and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, what are we really doing that? Um, you know, we sell. Um, well, in technical terms, a bajillion <laughs> bike bells, right? So we make more bike bells than anyone makes bike, bike bells. So imagine a beautiful soccer pitch. Uh, actually, imagine three of them all covered with small, little, like three inch by three inch poly bags. Mm. I mean, that's what we were doing when we were m making bells. We were taking all of our bells and putting them inside of a a little poly bag and then shipping them it helps them from getting scratched or dinged up and shipping and et cetera, et cetera. But you know what? We said, wait a minute, that that's crazy. We could just take a small piece of recycled paper and, you know, put it on top of it and that would keep, keep, keep it from scratching. So, you know, these are what we would say is a small hinge that swings a big door. You know, it's just one little bike bell in a little poly bag. But then when you have millions of them out there um, and you start to look at, you know, the impact that that's ha ha having, you realize, hey, we have to hold ourselves accountable and we can do better. I wish that honestly that we could just end the episode right there <laughs> because that was that was lovely. And and yet I have more questions, if that's well, OK with don't. you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Of course. Uh, you know, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for, for this, because I think taking, you know, you're calling them small steps, but they they really do. Like you said, a small hinge that swings a big door. It makes a huge difference over the long haul. Over time, that little bit of plastic not being used that way makes a ginormous difference. And, and you know, it's interesting looking at the plastic. And I, and I do want to keep saying plastic because that's what's normal in my head, but it's plastic, like basket. And, uh, you know, looking at it, to, to, to step back just a little bit and be a girly girl at you, it's also really cute. It's just really uh, like looking at it. It's really, it looks, I love form and function when they're together. And it looks like you really spent time looking at the function. How are people going to use it? And what can we do to make it super easy? But also the form, how can we make this attractive in colors that are fun and cool that, that, that people will want to put on their bikes? So right. I, I mean, a, a, a super interesting story around that is that is that you know we we're, when you're again when you're working with plastic it's hard sometimes to create great colors because you know the plas the pl the recycled plastic has its own kind of color and tint to it so we did come up with four great colors uh, uh, for those uh, plastics but interestingly enough when you're injecting this into the mold and you're making these plastics when you change from one color to to the next it's not like it's just like, oh, you're, you know, making one that's, you know, tangerine and now you're going to make one that's a mint color. I mean, it doesn't just go from one to the next. Right. So what happens is all these plastics get made as they're changing the dye mm. um, and you get all these crazy wild designs. So I was up at our manufacturer for this um, last year when they were doing some of these first runs um, and they were swapping um uh, dye colors out and you end up with, I don't know, maybe you can end up six to a dozen uh, plastics that aren't one color or the other. They're really kind of a 
funky tie dye color. Mm. Um, and they said, well, these were just going to ground up and discard. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, what, I mean, why would we do that? Right. I mean, now, now we've created an absolute one of a kind right. basket. There, there'll never be another one that looks exactly like any of these 12. So um, now we have for our, um, our ambassadors, our fun ambassadors that we call them at Electra, um, we have some, you know, one-off, one-of-a-kind plaskets that people can, uh, can can get as well too. So, so even that we're trying to, you know, uh, uh, use and 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 not have to recycle. I think that's fabulous. There, it's it it is. It's a one-of-a-kind. It's 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 something that is unique and and no one else is going to have one like it exactly so i think right. that, <laughs> and i know you know like with the advent of nfts and things like that everyone's interested in having something that that is that really is them and yeah. represents their you know their ideal of what a basket would be my basket exactly. is hot pink so i totally understand the notion of of yeah. wanting a, a basket that's that's super uh personalized to you and i think that's you know that that n notion of one of a kind unique limited edition you know yeah, exactly it's, right. it's exactly right. i love it i love it and you know something you said that i just i know i know that you have a day to get back to so i, I don't want to keep you too long but you said something that i that i want to get back to when we were talking about this notion of people being out on the town you also mentioned that 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 notion of bike sharing and that you want to bring it to Encinitas and you want to have more of that. Can you talk a little bit about why bike sharing and what you're doing to promote that? For sure. For sure. So when we look at our list of things that we think we can, you know, help change the world um, and um, hold ourselves accountable for, you know, there's a, there's, there's a, a short list of, of, of things that we are absolutely focused on, right? And so some of those are, you know, renewable energy, like our electric headquarters in, in, in Sanitas, you know, it utilizes solar and renewable electricity there. Um, you know, we've talked about this whole alternative material. So whether it's recycled or recyclable or reclaimed or refurbished or whatever, as in the case of the plastic, that that plastic weighs about a pound and it uses one pound of recycled ocean plastic. So that's, you know, net net zero about, um, you know, we talked about removing plastic waste from all, all of our packaging, super important to us. Um, and, you know, a, again, you know, another one for us is, you know, increasing access to bike share uh, because listen, while we love to sell bikes, I mean, it's super important to get people out riding bikes, especially in, in cities, um, because to your own experience, it helps with, uh, you know, with, with city traffic, it helps city leaders understand their responsibility for helping to create safe routes throughout cities and to our kids' schools. Um, it, uh, you know, it puts pressure on them for, for bike lanes and more share lanes and protected bike bike lanes. And one thing we recently uh, did, I mean, it's recent because it just ha happened, but it's been multiple years um, in, the, in the making, is we launched a bike share program with B-Cycle, um, uh, which is a, a Trek owned uh, brand, which is absolutely um, awesome, right in Encinitas, California. So right in our, hometown, uh, the home of electric bikes is B-Cycle Bike Share. You know, and oftentimes pe people would say, well, wait, isn't this going to hurt the sales of your bikes, your e-bikes? And my point is absolutely not. This is going to get more people exposed to, to riding an e-bike because all the bikes in the bike share program are pedal assist bikes. Um, you know, they're docked bikes. So they're, they get checked out of a dock and returned to a dock. So they don't cause clutter around the street or get left on sidewalks or down at the beach. Um, and it just gets more people exposed to this mode of transportation, which again goes back to more people on bikes more often. And the more people that do that, the, uh, the better off we are as, uh, as, as a people and as a planet for, for, for sure. So, you know, I, again, you know, I think, you know, this bikes can be a real agent of change. You know, some of the the greatest 
influences, right, um, can be the simplest things. And so, you know, we're supporting all sorts of, of causes around, you know, our own hometown locally and globally, um, you know, for helping to get more people on bikes more often. And um, I don't know, it's just a, it's a, it's, it's, it sounds logical, but, but again, you know, as I think bike companies have been left a little bit off the hook on these things before, they just were like, oh, they just make bikes and that's enough, but it's really not enough. Mm. You know, uh, en enough is when, when, you know, we fix our climate challenges enough is when we, you know, when we fix the number of people, you know, dying from, you know, chronic disease that are, that's, that's health related, you know, enough is, you know, when we stop spending, you know, billion dollars on, on, on healthcare costs because of poor air quality, you know, I mean, you, you know, enough is when people are, are, are living, you know, healthy, happy outdoor lives. Um, so I, I, we won't stop until, until we get there. So um, we got a long road to hoe for sure. And yet you're doing it bit by bit, step by step, pedal by pedal. I love it. I love yeah. it. I'm so grateful that you took the time to join me on the show to talk about this. It's a really, I mean, it, you don't, you don't think of it in this way, but you're, you're innovating something that a lot of us learn when we're like five or six or seven years old, but this is different because it means as adults, we can take that back up, especially people who haven't been riding for a long time. You can still do it, especially with something like pedal assist, which again, again, I'm saving my pennies, but, um, <laughs> No, because but you're exactly right, though, right? I mean, you're, you're, I mean that that is the the you know the nail on the head, right? I mean, if you take the complication out of it, right? If you if you if you make it an in, inclusive, fun thing to do, right? I mean, you know, I, I think oftentimes you know the the average electro rider might be someone who hasn't been on a bike in years and years, and mm -hmm. and just you know, hasn't got back around to, to, to doing it. And it's one of those things that once you do get back on a bike, and I know that, that you know this firsthand, you're like, oh my gosh, this was that feeling I had when I was, you know, eight or 10 exactly. or 12. You know, I mean, the bike was the first, the first thing you got that, that expanded your world, that it let you get beyond where you could just walk around your block, but now out throughout the entire neighborhood, a way to have freedom to get to the park and meet your friends and whatever and to get back to that feeling there's some nostalgia there that I think the electro brand has a way of of capturing and now we're just trying to do it in the most fun stylish and you know sustainable way as possible and I really hope you succeed I think it's I think it's wonderful I really do and if with your permission I would love to get a copy of an image of, of one of the plaskets so I can put it in the show notes because this, this it's, it's adorable. <laughs> and now I'm going, do I want the mint one or do I want the tangerine right, yeah. one? You know, and that's, I, it, I, I am a girly girl and I will always be a girly girl. And so I love the fact that you offer those kinds of colors and those kinds of, it's vibrant and it's lovely. Uh, I would love it also if you wouldn't mind uh, because I know people learn differently. I'm going to put all the links in the show notes, but could you tell if somebody wants to get to Electra, how do they find you on Instagram or on LinkedIn or your website? Could you just detail, detail those real quick? You sure can. And I'll have the team forward all that data to, to you as well, but you can find us at electrabike.com on, on, on the internet. And that will be the, the key to everything for us. Also from there, you'll be able to access our, Instagram account, um, as well as all of our other social media platforms. Awesome. That's great. Thank you so much. And uh, you, you called yourself Casey. Are you Kevin or are you Casey? <laughs> yeah, it's funny, right? M my wife is the only one that calls me um, Kevin, but uh, for some reason I got a, 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 a Casey designator uh, some year, years ago. So yeah, it's always funny. So sometimes yeah. I refer, refer to myself as Casey, right? Yeah, no, no, no. It's it per perfectly fine. I can refer to you as Casey. I am not your <laughs> wife, so there you go. I'll answer to just about anything. <laughs>
Yeah, we, and you can imagine with my name, the 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 e, the mail that I've gotten. My my favorite one was Izimbra Dragonburger. I I have gotten yeah. mail for Izimbra, and I went, yes, I will be Izimbra. She will be my badass alter ego. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have I, I Casey. Uh, I know it's it, and Griselda Griselda Dragon Poop was another one that I got. So <laughs> I, I get some strange letters. Um, you just gotta embrace it. Yeah, I, and I believe me, if I if I hadn't embraced it like thirty years ago, it would be a very I would be a very different person. You have to yeah, sort of exactly right. You have to roll with it. Uh, so Casey, I have just one more question, uh, and it's a silly question, but I find that it can yield some profound answers. And the question is this: If you had an airplane that could skywrite anything for the whole world to see, what would you say? I would say. Grab life by the handlebars. I love it. That's great. That is great. What a <laughs> what a perfect a perfect. You have to be quite to a writer, though, probably to do that. <laughs> well, but you know, it's the big one, sky. That's right. But that's okay. I've had people leave like three sentences, and I'm like, okay, that that was a that was multiple airplanes flying in the sky, right? right so, exactly right. no, I think that's great. I think it, you know that grab life by the handlebars. I've never heard that before, and I love it. Cool, Casey. Thank you so much There's for being thank here. Thank you for your time. Time today, too. Have an awesome rest of your week, and uh, hopefully, our paths will cross again soon. Awesome. Thank you so much. This is Isolde Trachtenberg for the Innovative Mindset Podcast. You have just enjoyed an hour with the amazing Casey Cox talking about his incredible bike company and the Plasket and the things that they're doing to save the planet and change the world, which you know how close that is to my heart. Today's episode has been brought to you by Brain FM and also by my book, Speak From Within. If you are liking both of those, I'd love it if you'd leave a review of the show to let me know what you're thinking, to let me know how you're doing. Until next time, this is Isolde Trachtenberg once again reminding you to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2021. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind.